I think I'm going to call this video Re-Roofing a Steep Pitched House with an alternate title of Re-Roofing for Old People as I'm now 66 years old but um, this house I designed and built it myself 40 years ago in 1978 uh, using a lot of recycled lumber from a barn uh, somewhat in the shape of a barn it's got what's called a gambrel roof on it which is uh, two different slopes and the uh, slope there that you're looking at is a uh, it's 60 degrees or also known as a 2112 slope and the high roof up there if you can see it with the vent pipe in it that's a 712 slope roof so this roof down here for every uh, 12 inches of horizontal run it goes up 21 inches so it's just way too steep to stand on so uh, it's a lot of work to roof a house like this so this video will kind of dive into a little bit of that and hopefully help you out if you're ever uh, trying to re-roof a steep roof so this side of the roof is done i started setting scaffold on it about six weeks ago went through uh, i think three snowstorms in april in iowa so it took a long time to do this and i did almost all the work myself uh, with a little bit of help with my wife and my dad getting shingles up on the roof and things like that but anyway it's done and um, now I'm ready to move over to the other side so I thought I'd better do this video before I forget the whole thing and what I used was a uh, what they call an architectural shingle and uh, I'll show them to you in here it's a product made by Atlas uh, roofing company it's called a storm master shake and uh, here's what they look like and uh, when I built the house originally I used what they called a conventional three tab organic asphalt shingle which means the base of it was paper impregnated with uh, asphalt and you don't I don't know that there's any organic shingles made anymore nowadays the base that forms the uh, the base of the shingle is uh, fiberglass and it's impregnated with asphalt uh, the old shingles uh, on the other side of the house are three feet long so from that end to that end they're three feet long these are three and a half feet long and the old shingles are set uh, five inches to, to the weather which means from the uh, edge of the shingle up to that point would be five inches on the uh, old shingles the new shingles are six inches from there to there this is also what they call a class four shingle which means it's going to be a hail and impact resistant up to a two inch hailstone shouldn't hurt these shingles uh, when I get off that roof for the last time I uh, don't look to ever go back on that roof at my age so if you can kind of burn into your mind what this side looks like uh, being re-roofed we'll walk around the house here and show you uh, what a roof that's 20 years old now looks like and it suffered a little bit from probably some algae growth on it because this side of the house is more heavily shaded and it faces to the north and the east which is uh, a good side weather-wise in Iowa to not take much impact so you can see these are three tab shingles typically you'd get about 20 years out of those and that's what I've gotten out of these um, I've got some lifelines hung off the edge already I'm going to get ready to build some scaffolding along this side of the house and to start to work on the tear off and the re-roof. So it's a rainy Saturday so I took the day to build a scaffold and um, this scaffold is about 8 foot high. No handrails on it. It is OSHA compliant. They say you can go 10 foot without handrails although uh, or guardrails, although I think it's a good idea to get them on there, and I'll probably put a few right in the area where I built this set of steps to get up on the roof. I use this set of steps hundreds of times. Uh, a couple of things I guess I'd like to show you before we get going. Uh, the condition of the old shingles down at the edge of the roof. Pretty bad. Um, a little bit of moss growing on in places. This side of the house faces the northeast, and it's shaded. A nice oak tree right there that shades it very well and so moss tends to grow also there's some staining on the roof and 
the new shingles that I'm using, Atlas Stormmaster Shakes, they're called, um, are treated with uh, Scotch Guard, and uh, then I'll put a special ridge cap on it as well that should stop the uh, discoloration of the roof. This window area here, uh, I'm going to have to tear the siding off of that and put new siding on it. Um, the, one of the reasons is these old shingles are called, uh, they're a three tab shingle, they're five inches from there to there. And so this step flashing that's over there, typical tin shingle, they measure five by seven. And so the new uh, shakes will not be, uh, the, the step flashing for those won't be high enough. So bent up uh, new pieces of step flashing right there and it measures eight inches by three vertical by three horizontal so I've got to tear that siding apart to uh, get new step flashing in there and also the the siding's just kind of seen its better days as well it needs to be replaced anyway so here's a mock-up of the uh, new shingles again they're Atlas Star Master shakes I'm not affiliated with them in any way shape or form but what I did look for was a class 4 shingle so these shingles are tested by dropping a steel ball from, I think, a height of 10 foot twice in the same place on the shingle. And if they don't damage the shingle, then they get a class 4 rating. And theoretically, they should withstand a hailstorm in a much better way. So I want to do this job once. I won't get back on the roof again. I'm 66 years old. By the time this house needs re-roofed, somebody else is going to have to do it. Um, a few of the differences between these shingles and the old ones... Uh, the old ones are traditional three tab. The shingles measured uh, three foot long by uh, one foot uh, in width, and you put five inches to the exposure, so five inches from there to there. Now, the new shingles measure three foot six inches long and 14 inches in width, and you put six inches to the uh, weather, so uh, you run two courses, you've got 12 inches already as compared with two courses here where you'd have from there to there you'd have 10 inches. Um, so less shingles to put on um, but they are bigger shingles. Well there's not a whole lot of different ways to strip a roof but I've settled on a way that's going to work for me and you got to remember that I'm roofing this house myself. One guy doing it and it's going to take me probably a couple of weeks by the time I work around with weather and everything else. So whatever I tear off in a day's time, I've got to at least make sure it's buttoned up weather tight before the next rainstorm. So in Iowa in the springtime, you don't really gamble with that too much. So that pretty much means at the end of every day, I'm going to be uh, weather tight, uh, water tight anyway. And uh, here's a shingle spade and it works great for uh, ripping shingles off a roof. Uh, it seems like the warmer a roof is, the better it's going to work. If you attack a, uh, a roof when it's cold with that spade, it just kind of shatters a lot of the shingles. You end up with a lot of little pieces. When the roof is warm, it does a better job. And the little teeth down at the bottom um, fit around the nails, and a lot of times you'll be able to pull the nails and the shingle and the whole bit up. But you'll still have some cleanup to do after that. Uh, the way that I settled on this was, um, well, if you can see that, the, that, the edge of that uh, 15 pound felt right there okay yeah right there so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, tear the shingles off below that kind of the length of the roof and then go back and re-roof that part and then set uh, roof jacks or toe brackets whatever you want to call them and then move up after that so that's how I'm doing the uh, roof stripping here I'm a Pulling the nails with a device that's, I think the proper name is a cat's paw. And uh, maybe you can see why it's called a cat's paw. Uh, some of us carpenters, we call them booger pickers for uh, obvious reasons, I guess. And you're going after the big buggers if you're using that. But uh, So I take that and strike it on the back with a hammer. Uh, or on this end with a hammer, if you're, this end with a hammer if you're using the other end and start that roofing nail loose and then pop it the rest of the way out with a claw hammer. So the goal is to save this, this shingle right here and not damage it and uh, the edge of this felt as well. That way I can pop these staples loose 
lift up this piece of felt shingle up underneath it and uh, keep the, the roof weather tight as we go. So um, getting this shingle out right here, uh, somewhat of a trick really. You have to go up and raise this tab and pull that nail right there and then raise this tab and pull that nail and then this shingle will come loose. So that's what it takes to get that first shingle out. And then after that, it's pretty simple. You just go across the across the roof and pull the nails one at a time with a cat's paw and a hammer. One of the pluses to doing it this way is the shingles come off as full shingles. And they're a whole lot easier to handle that way rather than uh, bust it into a, a lot of little pieces where you've got to even go down on the ground and do a cleanup. So the shingles come off as full pieces. I can throw them in the truck. They're a whole lot easier to unload out of a pickup truck that way too than a, a tangled up mess of shingles as well. If you've got a dump truck, it's not an issue, but uh, if you're unloading scrap shingles or old shingles out of a pickup truck, they're a whole lot easier to unload like this than they are all tangled up in a mess. So well, maybe I'll try to show you a little bit of how to strip those shingles. Now one thing I'd say too is wear some good gloves, protect your hands. Asphalt shingles just have a way of eating up your hands. So anyway, put the cat's paw right by the edge of the nail, give it one or two taps, start it loose. back across the row and just pick the nails out, put the nails in your pocket, all the mess is contained, the fingers come off as full pieces, and I'm in control of the roof that way, so that's how I'm stripping shingles.